So every night for the last year and a half, I have done the following magical routine. Okay, I've brushed my teeth, I have flossed now that I am in my 30s, taken 75 milligrams of Zoloft, and then mindlessly doom scrolled on my phone until I fall asleep. And I have no intention of changing at least the first three habits anytime soon. Here's why. I started to take Zoloft, or as it's known by its generic name, sertraline, about one and a half years ago for some pretty intense anxiety and some depression. You can see a previous video on that. And they were getting worse in the setting of a pandemic, being a healthcare worker, being a ma, working, like life is just crazy. But um, had I been really, really like honest with myself, I probably would have seen that this has been going on forever in retrospect, but hindsight. 2020. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Liz. You're probably like, why are you telling me this? Um, but on my channel, I share all sorts of healthcare related commentary and opinions through my lens as a family nurse practitioner. And today we will be looking at my last year and a half of taking Zoloft so that hopefully it's a little bit less scary. If you are also considering this as a life choice, I'll give you some things that I usually just like tell my patients as they were navigating this journey as well. We'll just kind of all share and express our experiences together. Let's start with a likely pretty obvious question. Has Zoloft helped relieved my anxiety and depression? No, not at all. Um, I've just been really stubborn. I've enjoyed paying thousands of dollars every year, going to my primary care provider for the office to go get the script. Um, if you didn't read the sarcasm, please do. Overall, yes. Yes, Zoloft has really, really helped me. And I can measure this kind of more objectively in two ways so we have more of a concrete way of seeing the results. The first one is a mood calendar, which is any calendar or planner where I basically just take the dates on the month mode and I rate my moods from one to 10 every single day along with any like notes that I wanna put on it. At the end of each day, I write down two scores, one for anxiety and one for depression because I have both flavors going on in my brain. And on my scale, a one is like a really bad day and a 10 is like a great day, Disneyland type of day, but you can organize yours however you would like. And I'll occasionally write notes on things that were also going on, whether it was like, oh, I got in a fight with my husband, my was really stressed at work, my kids were sick, I didn't sleep at all, or hey, I exercised this day, I got outside, I had fun. That way I can look back at the week and see how I was actually doing and what external factors may have played into that. So this mood or symptom calendar thing, whatever you wanna call it, is something I encourage a lot of my patients to keep, especially when they're struggling with physical or mental concerns, because it can be really, really hard to describe your moods or your pain over a period of time, like a week or a month. So when you're going and you're like, we're counting it to your healthcare provider, because human memory is incredibly unreliable and we're prone to either exaggerate or downplay our symptoms based on what has happened recently or surrounding like a very dramatic event that happened in our week. For example, when I ask you how your mood is, you may say you're overall okay, even though you literally made an appointment to come discuss depression symptoms with me at this appointment today because you realized you had been feeling pretty sad, but yesterday happened to be a super great day. You went out with your friends. It was, you know, you got a lot of stuff done. It was a great day. So you're remembering that and maybe not incredibly accurately remembering all the days that came before it. Or you can do the really fun thing that I do where I downplay all of my emotions all of a sudden, as soon as I get in the presence of others, I'm like, oh yeah, yesterday was like, yesterday was good. So I'm sure all the days are good. There's nothing wrong here. I'm happy. My past self was just being like super dramatic. Things are fine. I'm good. And um, if you are good, like golden, but this can help you get a much more objective view of how you've been feeling recently, especially if things have been not good. And when I look at my mood calendars since starting Zoloft, I have more happy and less anxious days than bad days. And that was certainly not the case before. The second thing that I've noticed a huge improvement in is my ability to prioritize and complete tasks. When I was having a lot of anxiety, I, I constantly felt like every little thing was an absolute emergency. I had no, I had no chill, uh, which then panicked and overwhelmed me. 
And I have a really horrible response to overwhelm where I just, I freeze. Like if I was in any type of like zombie apocalypse, I would just be immediately die because I am 100% the freeze part of fight, flight, or freeze. And if you can imagine, if you're overwhelmed and everything seems like an absolute emergency, there's no ability to prioritize tasks. So I just stare at all of them, unable to start them because I don't know which one is the most important. And then I don't get them done and then more tasks pile on top and then this cycle just, it keeps going. Anyone else? <laughs> I know I can't be the only one, but starting Zoloft helped so much with this. I'm not saying like I don't freeze and with overwhelm anymore, but once I have a moment or a day, I can usually come back to the situation, prioritize it and come up with an action plan, which is a huge improvement from the indefinite paralysis from before. So I actually get things done now and it's a delightful and concrete measurable improvement. Side note. If you struggle with overwhelm paralysis related to anxiety, I have a little tip to help you maybe combat that. I've recently discovered it and it's worked pretty well, for me at least. There's an app, it's called AnyDo. It's a digital to-do list and in it you can create different categories that you can make. Um, I think it was like $30 a year on the app store and then they have a app like for your desktop as well. It syncs to your phone and your computer. It'll send you reminders and it's really convenient for brain dumping all of the different things that you need to do and you can set due dates, you can prioritize within it. If you need a digital prioritization planning tool, I like this one and it keeps me from like doom spiraling most days. Now you might be sitting there like, um, uh, hey Liz, um, doom spirals sound bad. Are those normal? I will let you know right after a word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by me and my primary care digital nurse practitioner binder. If you're an advanced practice provider working in primary care, this could very well be for you. In it, I put all of the notes I've made myself over the years, guidelines, cheat sheets that I've made, as well as patient handouts. It's a one-time fee and I do quarterly updates so it's up to date with practice. Check out more in the description below. Welcome back. I do want to reassure you fellow doom spiralers that they can be very normal. Remember anxiety and depression medication like Zoloft, they help to reduce the overall anxiety and depression, especially the peaks. We're going to kind of just like flatten those out, but it doesn't eliminate the hills entirely, right? So we still have those feelings a lot of the times. If your medication is dosed correctly, you should still have all the feels, all the feelings, because feelings are okay. It's when we have so many feelings that we can't function and we can't do things that we want to, that is when we have a problem. Also, there are good feelings, <laughs> the happiness, joy, laughter, all the good things that we want you to keep. And dosing too high can actually squash the good feelings. So work with your healthcare provider to find the sweet spot and do other things to reduce anxiety and depression, to support symptom management. A few of my favorite ways to improve my mental health are like being outside, listening to any free YouTube meditation app type of thing, going to therapy if you can afford it. I can't right now, but when you, I have gone, it's been great. Um, getting enough sleep is also huge. Your mood cannot regulate if you are exhausted and practicing setting really solid boundaries is key. Seriously, saying no to things or people is a superpower, use it. And if anyone is pushing a boundary that you don't like and they get grouchy, that is a them problem and that is not a you problem. You need to protect you and your space. How they react is their problem. So let's take a quick look at this graph real quick and I will show you that with a little bit of store-bought serotonin, we can really help get your brain to a much more stable place where there aren't so many mountains and valleys of doom. Things are just like a little bit more chill overall and all seems like this seems super good, right? Well, well, you thought. I, I, if you didn't know, am the embodiment of Eeyore as a human. So obviously I will find a downside to this. This plateau of peace, it looks nice, but it can be a trap because you can be feeling good for a really long time and get used to that feeling good feeling, forgetting about the peaks and valleys of doom and why you started the medication in the first place and think, hey, I don't think I need these meds anymore. I feel great. I have had a few of these moments while taking this medication. Granted, I've had pretty few of them because my brain is pretty angsty all the time. So I haven't hit enough of those like, wow, my mood is nine out of 10 today and tomorrow and the next day. And I don't get enough of those in a row to really consider this. But 
I wanted to touch on this trap because it is something that happens so often with my patients. They will start the medication. They're doing great. A few months go by. They have felt better for a while. And then they come in and they say, Hey, I want to get off my meds. I think like I'm better. I'm doing great. And I just want to be clear here. First of all, this is not medical advice. Second, I am not against you going off of meds. It is your body. It is your choice. You do you. But just pause and remember, if you're taking meds and considering stopping, you may be feeling better because of the medication. And you also like, because of the medication may now have the mental energy to do other things that also help your mental health. Maybe now you're like, I can imagine doing yoga. I can imagine going on walks outside. I'm getting stuff done finally. So one thing I used to do to help decide if like coming off of meds was maybe a good choice for my patient, we would look together and see was this like, what led up to you starting meds? Was this a pattern over a long period of time? You know, are we looking at like months and years of having these symptoms or was it a shorter term? Like maybe you are going through a divorce or you are having a really stressful year in school. If it's a shorter term thing, then I'm much more likely to be like, yeah, hey, let's trial off of it and see because it was situational most likely and that situation has stopped. However, if you're in the camp of like, oh, this has been going on for months and years, I'm more hesitant to be like, yeah, as soon as you're feeling good, like let's rip that right off. Like you're probably fine because it's more likely that the underlying condition has probably not resolved. Anyway, feeling good is the goal. Remember that. So, um, just be cautious when you're walking that, uh, little rope. Um, always, like I said, your body, your choice, you do you. Um, but just be cognizant that this, it, it might be a trap. You want to know what else is a trap side effects. What side effects have I had? This is a very common question that I get and I haven't really had it that bad. A major side effect that I've had like the entire time of taking it is night sweats. <laughs> Poor husband. <laughs> I have also gained like 15 pounds since starting the medication, but I can't confidently say that this is because of Zoloft, uh, because I have also stopped exercising and restricting my food intake as strictly as I was before, because I'm a lot less anxious. I'm less angry at myself. I'm less fixated on food. There's just a lot less anxiety and like self deprecation since I've started. So things have gotten a little bit more relaxed. Um, so there's that I have a whole video where I discuss weight gain and anxiety and depression medication. If you want to hop over there after this, but those are pretty much, I mean, my two big side effects, there are quite a few more side effects that people commonly experience with, um, with these medications, however, and I have a whole video on what most of the side effects are, how long, you know, are these going to be side effects we only see in the beginning and then they go away? Or are these ones that are likely to stay? Are there fixes for it? And then what are like the red flags? Like if you have this immediately stop taking it type of side effects, I feel pretty lucky that I've only had to deal with those two things long-term and all of my short-term symptoms, um, had gone away within three weeks of starting. I talk about those in my, like starting Zoloft video. So all in all, I have had a pretty good experience taking Zoloft, which leads me to the question of how long am I going to take it? And personally, I have no plans of coming off of it. I wouldn't stop a blood pressure or thyroid medication because my blood pressure or thyroid function had now normalized once taking medicine. And I look at this the exact same way. I will continue to support my body with things that also improve my mental health while also bowing down to the SSRI Zoloft gods for sending my synthetic serotonin to me. And I want to try to quell some fears. You know, if you're anytime you feel like you talk to people about starting medication like this, there people are going to shove random studies at you showing the potential risks of being on Zoloft long term. Um, I and to that, I usually just tell them like, the data supports long-term use of these meds as safe. There are always going to be the rogue paper that find this random data, but overall these medications are safe in the long term. And we have to acknowledge that none of this exists in a vacuum, right? So we have to weigh in. What if even like, even if there are risks to it long-term, we have to assess that with like quality of life and what happens if we don't take medicine for our anxiety and depression? Like that leads to really anxious and sad lives. And that can have outcomes that are completely unacceptable. So that's usually how I frame it with my patients as well. Always being very open and honest. Um, if the data changes, then we'll discuss that then. But I want you to know that your mental health is important. 
and taking medication to support it is not giving in. It's not, um, you know, it's not doing anything negative. It is standing up for you. So don't let any quack on the internet talk you out of standing up for yourself and doing what's best for you. Also don't let any healthcare professional on that same level talk you into or out of it either. As healthcare providers, if you go to someone like your healthcare provider is there to understand the research and educate you on it. And then you get to pick what to do with that information in your body. We're like the guides and you get to pick it. So if someone is forcing you into a medication, that is also inappropriate because your body is yours and it's a great body. And if we need to supplement it with a little bit of extra serotonin, it deserves that. And it's totally okay. It is not a moral failing on your part. I hope that this video gave you like a little bit of peace if you are also starting a medication for your mental health. I know there are a lot of horror stories out there on the internet, but remember people who feel better usually aren't the ones making the videos. It's the people with the bad experiences who are more likely to do it. That is in no way diminishing their experiences at all. People absolutely have bad experiences with Zoloft and every other medication on the planet. But let me tell you as someone who prescribes a lot of medications for anxiety and depression, most people do improve with them when they are taking the like right medicine for them when we find a good fit and a good dose and you deserve to live a happy healthy less anxious more productive life filled with hobbies and activities that you enjoy even if you need a little bit of store-bought serotonin to get you there so don't look at the internet the internet's going to be filled with horror stories i have gone down that path i do not recommend it i mean make an informed choice but don't doom spiral there, friend. Don't doom spiral. Don't fall for it. Thank you so much for spending some of your precious time with me today. And a huge shout out and thank you to my first two channel members, Sophia and David. If you would like to support the channel by joining or sending me a coffee, I so, so appreciate you. Or you can like, comment, and share for free, which makes the YouTube gods super duper happy. And in turn, makes me super duper happy. I hope to see you next time, friend. Until then, please remember that you are not alone. You are enough and you can do hard things. I hope to see you next time, friend. And until then, you'll probably like this video about common Zoloft and SSRI side effects, or maybe this other one.